Hi guys, thank you for tuning back in. We are so excited about sharing yet another aspect of Night for Life with you all. And uh, my favorite part of the entire evening was Kelly's talk. I mean, <clears throat> I'm not saying that because I have to, I promise. <laughs> it was so good and um, I can't wait for you guys to tune in and listen to what she has to say. I have to tell you, following Tony Foster and Tara Hamilton was probably the most intimidating <laughs> thing I've ever done in my entire life, but it was really fun to be able to share my heart uh, with what God's doing at Piedmont Women's Center with everybody. The moment I first heard that song, I just knew we had to do it at an event. I just knew it. I mean, did y'all hear those words? Like to hold fast to something. Look at your neighbor and say, he's going to hold you fast. He's going to hold me fast. Let me tell you, I didn't really understand the meaning of that song until I looked it up. And to hold fast means that you don't change your mind about a principle or an idea. But when God says he'll hold you fast, that means he hasn't changed his mind about you. Right? It means he never will. Isn't that the most amazing thing? And as we were, she was singing uh, in our pre-service, I got a little emotional, right? A little 26-week-old baby. Isn't that amazing? God is holding that baby fast. I had a miscarriage in 1996, a little 14 week old baby. It was a rough time. But God held me fast. He held my husband fast. And he's holding that little baby fast until the day we meet in heaven. Isn't that amazing? Like, God's that good. God's that big. And there are some of you who have experienced the loss of a baby, whether through miscarriage or infant loss, or maybe there was just a child that you lost way too soon. Can I tell you it's good news? Because God holds all of those precious little ones fast to himself. That's what he does. That's who he is. He can't help himself. He loves you so much from the womb to the tomb right like the whole idea of the sanctity of human life it's not just about the preborn. it's about the whole deal that's how much God loves you and if you don't hear anything else tonight about Piedmont Women's Center or about the last 30 years I want you to hear it's not about me it's not about our founders. We're going to celebrate all that. But it is about the good Lord Jesus Christ. Because we have a choice to make as humans. We can choose to say yes to Him and trust that our life is being built on the firm foundation and that He will hold us fast through the whole deal. Even when it's not very fun. Y'all got that for free. That's not even in my notes. All right? That's the kind of person I am. Notes, who cares? Time, it's just a thing. Y'all are thinking, she better end quick. <laughs> I promise, I promise. Matthew 7, 24 and 25 says it like this. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them. Y'all say that, does them. They will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been built on a rock. Can I tell you, tonight we gather here because Piedmont Women's Center was built on the rock 30 years ago. In 1991. And the last 30 years of ministry excellence are about the foundation. It's not about today, it's about the foundation I want to point out, this is not our story, it's God's story. Like, that's what's so clear to me. When I came to this organization, I fell in love with this organization on my interview, and I would have probably been very disappointed had they not hired me. I'm just going to tell y'all. Because I fell in love with what they were doing at Piedmont Women's Center, 
And tonight is not about the amazing year. We had an amazing year last year. I know COVID was terrible, Corona's terrible. I get all that, but Piedmont Women's Center had an amazing year last year. It's not about that. It's not about pregnancy tests. It's not about ultrasounds. It's not about pap smears. It's not about the multiple new programs we've lost over, uh, launched over the last 12 months. Tonight's not even about the clients that we love dearly. Listen to this. 30 years, 90 thousand women have been served at Piedmont Women's Center over the last 30 years. Somebody better clap. That's a good thing. And all of these things are important and they're a means by which we measure our, the impact we're having in the community. But tonight I want to focus on the main character in our beautiful story. That's God Himself. I want to focus on Him for a little bit. Without God, there would be no Piedmont Women's Center. There would be no beacon of hope on Grove Road. And can I tell you, I think we just need to shout hallelujah, like praise the Lord, like that's good. That's a good thing. Because it's dark on Grove Road. At that abortion clinic, the blood, the ground is wet with the blood of the unborn. But I can tell you, there was a hill where ground was wet with blood. And that's where our hope comes from. That's, that's who, like when 90,000 women visit Piedmont Women's Center, we don't try to convince them to save their baby. I got news for you. We try to convince them to accept Jesus as their Savior. Because if they can make that commitment, let me just tell you, the, the unborn, that's a done deal. That's where our focus has to be. Over... 30 years, a whole lot has changed. I was, I was looking at the calendar 30 years ago in September of 1991. Uh, I was graduating from basic training. <laughs> and I can guarantee you a lot has changed. <laughs> I cannot fit in that uniform. It's not even close. Like it hangs in my closet as if one day it might make a reappearance. It's not going to happen. It's all right. I'm comfortable. I like it. Here are some other things that have changed since 1991. No cell phones. What? Yeah. No backup cars in your camera. Can I get an amen? Or backup cameras in your car. Like, that's amazing. Whoever thought of that? Kudos. Get this. The bathroom. How many of y'all remember when the bathroom in the kitchen was not the biggest room in your house? Can I get an amen? Wasn't the best room either, right? A lot's changed since 1991. But I have to tell y'all, a lot has remained the same. And one of the things that's not easy to talk about is that abortion continues the work of killing tiny humans. I want y'all to let that sit in for a second. These are tiny humans that if they were given the space and the time, they would be full-grown adults. This auditorium seats 7,000 people. I want you to think about 60 million people who no longer exist because of the tragedy of abortion. It would fill this room many, many times. Unfortunately, that work of abortion... We can simply call it killing or murder, but can I tell y'all it's much more complicated than that. Abortion is a satanic force. I have to be bold enough to say it like I see it. And it's satanic because not only does it take the life of an unborn child, but it rips the emotional component of a woman and let me tell you, men, you ought to be mad as you can be at Satan because abortion kills the role of the father. Let me tell you what else abortion does. It rips at the fabric of our community, and it is absolutely destroying the foundation of this nation. Life was a lot different in 1972 than it was in 73 when the abortion law passed. I want you to listen to this from the Declaration of Independence. It says, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. Look, the United States of America didn't give you any rights. It said the Creator did. Our Constitution, our Declaration of Independence, it only goes so far to protect them. God gave us that ability to breathe. 
not man. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Let me tell you people, it's time, it's past time for us to repent from our silence on the issue of, the, of abortion. And it's time we move on. Forty years, they walked around in the desert forty years. We've been walking around a lot longer than that with this issue of abortion, and it's past time. I'm calling you, I'm calling the church, repent. Blood is on your hands. The church can no longer be silent. While a lot of things have changed and a lot of things have stayed the same, Piedmont Women's Center still exists. There's been some highs and lows, some up and down. We couldn't have done it without our volunteers, without our staff, without our board of directors, and those faces have all changed many times over the years. We are seeing more people than ever, record numbers. In fact, I think I have a slide somewhere. And it's in your book, too. There you go. I want you all to look at that. 2,693 clients we served last year. Through July of this year, we've already served 2,256. God is good. He's doing something. He's bringing people, and we need to trust Him to just push it on forward and get it done. Here's what I can tell you. In, in fact, I don't just tell you this. I'm going to emphatically declare that. How do you all like it when somebody declares something? Right? And this is, I'm going to end with this declaration. We won't give up. Can y'all say that and believe it? We won't give up. Say it if you believe it. We won't give up. We won't back down. Can you say that? We won't back down. And here's why, because one abortion is one too many. The decades that lay ahead of us see us leaning on the firm foundations of our past. Let me tell you, loving God, loving people, fearless faith, bold innovation, and continuous improvement, that's who we are at Piedmont Women's Center. It's been that way since 1991, and it will be that way until the good Lord Jesus returns and calls us home. We won't, say it with me, we won't give up. We won't back down. And knowing that we serve a God who keeps His promises, here's what we can be sure of. He will continue it till it's finished. Today in this place and in this time, it's not a question for me of will He do it. It's He will do it. How many of y'all believe it? If you believe He's going to end abortion in our community as He knows it, will you just stand up? Like make me feel like I'm not so alone. Like if you believe it, stand it. Let me tell you, church, here's the deal. We always talk about let your voice be heard, but it's a time to let your face be seen. It's time to move forward. It's time to not just be complicit with it. And I'm going to say something. He's going to do it. I want you all to say those other three words. What will it say? He will do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. Wow, I'm so glad that you listened to me sharing my heart for Piedmont Women's Center and for the work of this ministry over the last 30 years. You know, it's not easy to serve 90,000 clients in a 30-year period, but we didn't sign up for easy. And God has been so faithful to this ministry over the years, and we appreciate you listening and tuning in. And I would also love for you to become either a volunteer, a monthly partner through your giving your time, through giving your talents, through giving your resources. That's really important to the work of the ministry here. And the bottom line, we can't do it without you. Yeah, absolutely. Click on the link to donate and tune in tomorrow. We are going to be celebrating our founders tomorrow. It's going to be a really exciting segment. You'll get to meet all of the people who made Piedmont Women's Center a possibility. And I can't wait for to, to be able to introduce those people to you tomorrow. So we'll see you then.